Today, I'm going to show you how to create perfect shadows in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be so helpful for those of you guys who are cutting your subjects out of their backgrounds and then need to place them on new backgrounds and recreate a shadow from scratch. In today's episode, we're going to start off with a subject who's already cut out. We're going to start by using the gradient tool, sampling a shadow color and actually using many different gradients to recreate the shadow. The key here is to use a lot of different layers. Shadows are really complex, so don't try to do it with just one layer. We're going to use many different gradients combined together to create these realistic shadows. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So jumping into Photoshop, we've got a couple of different layers we're starting with today. Now, we've got our first layer here is our subject, and she's already cut out from her background. So you can see we've got a layer mask. The only thing visible on her is basically just the subject. Now we have the floor. This is just a white rectangle we made on the bottom of the image. And then we have our background, which is made up of a color fill adjustment layer. And then we have a slight gradient on the right hand side there. Okay, so we're going to go about creating gradients. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of different types of shadows. You have hard shadows, you have soft shadows, shadows from above and below and right from the side. So when creating a shadow in Photoshop, it's very important that you keep in mind what type of image you're actually creating. And I suggest looking at the light source. If you have a very hard light source, you have to have hard shadows. A soft light source, like on a cloudy day, that's going to have soft shadows. So create the shadows that are right for your image. Now, in this episode, we're creating one type of shadow. So use the techniques we show you in this episode and then go try it with your own images. So to create our shadows, we're going to be using the gradient tool. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and get an idea of what we're going to be doing with our shadows. I'm going to create a new layer and then we're just going to grab a red brush here, just a regular brush tool. And first we're going to kind of outline the shadow that we're going to create. Now the deal with shadows is they're pretty like dark right underneath wherever is going to touch the ground. In this image, we've got our shoe is going to be touching the ground here. We're touching the ground here and we're touching the ground here. So those are going to be the darkest part of our shadow. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make a larger brush. We're going to make this a little softer. I'm just showing you guys, obviously <laughs> this isn't the real shadow. Now there also is going to be a little bit of shadow kind of coming out here, right? We have a little bit of shadow that's going to be coming out in these directions. There we go here. It's going to be coming out in that direction a little bit more. And that's just going to kind of fade out from the original hard shadow. So we've kind of looking at that. And then there we go, something like that. Make sure you got some shadow underneath the shoe. Okay. Now we also will have a larger shadow that's like the whole area that our subject is actually covering up. And I'm just going to paint with a large soft edge brush there to kind of get an idea of what we're going to be doing there. So we've got some like basically dark, harder shadows really close to the object here. And then we've got some large soft edge shadows that we're going to be creating that basically cover up the whole area. Okay. Now we're going to do everything underneath our shot subject. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to hit control or command G to group it with itself. And we'll double click and call this shadows. There we go. Now we're going to be using our gradient tool. So let's hit G for the gradient tool. We're going to click on our gradient editor and we're going to choose the foreground to transparent gradient. So we want a foreground color all the way to invisible or transparent. Okay. Let's hit okay there. Next, we have a couple of different types of gradients. We have a linear gradient and a radial gradient and a few more. Let's go ahead and click on our radial gradient. Okay. So radial gradient basically just does that. You get uh, basically a big blur of color here. Now, right now we're painting with red. So what we want to do is hold alt or option and I want to sample the shadow color from our image. So I'm actually going to sample this color right from inside of her shoe there. And you can see now we're going to be painting with the shadow color from this actual image. Okay. It's really dark. It's got a teeny bit of blue on it. Let's just desaturate that a little bit, but shadows do have color. 
most of the time shadows have a little bit of a bluish tint. So if you just make shadows completely grayscale, most of the time they're not going to look right, okay? So you wanna make sure they have, a lot of the time it's a little bit of a bluish tint. Okay, now let's go ahead and start off. So this is really fun actually. You do this in a lot of different layers. Basically, the first thing we're gonna do is click and drag out, all right? Now we're gonna use our move tool. So use your move tool and you can go ahead and move your shadow around. All right, now go ahead and put your shadow right here underneath where your subject is going to be, you know, touching the floor there. And we're gonna hit Control or Command T for our transform. Okay, now here in our transform, we just wanna shrink this shadow down. So I'm gonna grab this top slider here and then hold Alt or Option. It's gonna pull the bottom as well. There we go. And we're just gonna basically put that right where it needs to go and hit Enter. So we're just using gradients here, right? All right, and that actually looks okay. Now you can use your up arrow and your down arrow to kind of get this fine tune into place. Remember, you don't want your shadow to look like this, right? Because you need this shadow to match up with the shoe there, right? So you want to just kind of like move it there to the left. And then this is, it's going a little bit too far here to the left. Not a big deal. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. We're gonna hit Control or Command T and I'm gonna grab this side here and just kind of like pull that in just a little bit. There we go. All right, cool. So that's basically the idea, guys. Now we're gonna be doing this a bunch more times because again, shadows are very complex. So we want a harder shadow closer to where it's actually touching the floor, okay? And then it's gonna get softer as we move out. So we're gonna basically do this a bunch of times, increasing our softness and lowering the visibility as we go out from the source, okay? So let's go ahead, we're gonna lower the opacity this layer just a little bit. Now a quick, keyboard shortcut you can use, you can hit V, which jumps to your move tool, and then you can use the one through 10 numbers on your keyboard to change the opacity of your layers. So let's make that like a number, all right, we'll make that a number three. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna use my gradient tool again. We're gonna do this again here, and basically click and drag this down, and we want this to be just the area that's actually touching, there we go that's actually gonna to be touching right there underneath the shoe. All right, cool, that looks great there. Cool, let's go ahead and maybe lower the opacity of that just a little bit. And you can see already getting a little bit more of like a base here with the shadow just makes it look a little bit more realistic. All right, let's do the same thing again. We'll just grab a gradient over there, all right? Make it nice and small. And if you mess up here, it's really not a big deal, guys. You can just start over, all right? And there we go. We're gonna get that gradient going on there. So you can see a couple of gradients really helps out. Now let's go ahead and create a larger gradient. All right, larger gradient. And we're just gonna scale that one into place there. All right, right about there. Now this gradient is gonna get a really low opacity. So I'm gonna hit V on my, on my keyboard for my move tool. Then we're gonna hit the number one or the number two. Okay, so 10 or 20%. Again, you see, that's not gonna look real. So we want this to be 10 or 20% visible. We're gonna hit two and that's gonna make it 20% visible. So you can see it does do something, but it's really subtle. All right, we're already looking good. Now let's go ahead and create a new layer. There we go, gradient tool. All right, just one of those guys. And now we're gonna do the heel. So hit Control or Command T. We'll just kind of make this really small there. All right, and we'll go ahead and do the heel. All right, that's a little bit on the large size, so you know what? we're just gonna lower the opacity here. So I'm gonna hit V and then the number, eh, let's try the number three. There we go, that's looking good. And now we're gonna zoom in here. All right, and do a new gradient on a new layer. All right, and this one we're gonna make really nice and small. We just want it to be just where the heel is actually touching the ground. You can see, if you make it too large, it, it makes it look like the heel is actually floating. So make sure, you know, don't make that too large there. All right, cool, that looks good. All right, and this layer, you know what? I think we need to shrink this up a little bit too because see how round it is? It doesn't, it doesn't look quite real. So we'll hit Control or Command T and we'll just make this a little less round and I'm gonna use my down arrow a little bit. There we go, all right? Now if you need to, you can totally use your eraser tool. So hit E for the eraser tool and if it's a little, little too big, just paint with a soft edge brush with your eraser tool 
and just go ahead and erase it out. You can see that that just helped kind of like get it a little bit more in place. All right, now let's go ahead and do another one. This one we're gonna make a little bit larger. We're gonna hit Control or Command T. There we go. And we're gonna kind of pull it in towards the shoe just a little bit, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna lower the opacity. All right, so this is just, there we go. Something like 10% opacity totally works and we're just gonna erase that away. All right, so we can see here, let's go ahead and go back to our original. So that's the back heel there. So we've got one, two, three layers there, okay? And this takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of practice, but you can get really nice looking results because basically you're just building these effects up over and over again. Now, you can always turn these layers off and on at any time, okay? You can change the opacity of them at any time as well. And you know what? In this one, we'll say, oh, I want that to be duplicated. You can just duplicate it by hitting Control or Command J, maybe stretch it out a little bit more and bring that on back a little bit. There we go. So there's really no easier way to create complex shadows than this method. All right, cool. So we're looking great, guys. Now, we've got our first shoe pretty much taken care of. Let's go ahead and jump in and do our next shoe using basically the same techniques. All right, cool. Now for the next shoe, we're gonna go ahead and just create a new group. So we've got shadows, let's go ahead and double click and I'm gonna call this shadows one. Okay, there we go. And now we'll create a new layer, control or command G to group that with itself. And we'll call this shadows two, just to be a little bit more organized. Okay, now the shadows two group here in our first layer, G for the gradient tool. And again, just click and drag out. It doesn't even matter where you do this, okay? You can do it wherever you want because what we're doing basically is just transforming it into place. So Control or Command T, and that's gonna help you just kind of transform it into place. Now, if you find your editing, let's just zoom in there. If you find your editing and these little lines are getting in the way, sometimes these lines can get in the way when you're transforming. You're like, yeah, I wanna see what it looks like without those. Just hit Control or Command H. And that's gonna hide those, okay? Just remember H for hide. All right, there we go. And you can still even grab your corners. You, you can't see what you're doing as easily, but you can still totally transform even if, you're, even if your uh, edges are hidden there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, I like this. I like how the, it kind of touches right there. That looks good and then fades out immediately. Obviously, on the right-hand side, that doesn't look exactly right, right? So not a big deal. Just hit E for the eraser tool. Right click and make sure you've got your size, there we go, a little bit larger than you need, and your hardness, you wanna make sure you get a hardness of zero. All right, there we go. And I'm painting with a low flow also. I'm painting with a flow of 10%, so I can just kinda of go over this over and over and over again, and then just stop when we get it right. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good there, right? All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Maybe we'll lower the opacity to about 70%. Okay, and we'll go ahead and create a new layer and then we'll do this again. So Control or Command T, all right? This time it's gonna be a little bit larger, right? There we are, let's go ahead and squish that up. Okay, V for our move tool and then I'm gonna hit like two or three and that's gonna change our opacity. Go ahead and shrink that up a little bit there. All right, and let's stretch that out just a little bit more, it was a little bit too there we go, a little bit too squished there. All right, and now we'll just grab the eraser tool and erase away the right side of that. And we can use our up and down and left and right arrows to kind of move that around. All right, I still think that's a little bit too large actually. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. Really easy to do. Okay, that's looking better. And now let's just start lowering our opacity. All right, cool. Looking good, and let's go ahead and fade that out. All right, let's do another one. <laughs> so you can see, this is pretty easy. You just create a bunch of gradients and then get them, get them to kind of blend together. All right, there we go. And we'll just lower our opacity here just a little bit more. 
There we go. And now I'm going to race away the right hand side of that one as well. All right. So we've got, you can see, just kind of extending it out. And having a shadow, you know, each one of these adds a lot of realism to the shadow. Let's just zoom in there. You can see without this little guy, okay, it's just not the same. Each one of these has its own role to play here, okay? So as you're creating a shadow, just make sure that you're doing, like you're creating a bunch of different layers here, and each of these layers is going to come together and kind of create the shadow that you actually want. All right, now this shadow, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, you know what? That's just a little bit too visible. So let's go ahead and lower down the opacity, okay? That was our whole, that was a larger shadow right there. All right, let's make a new layer right above this, and we'll just make kind of a larger, not that large, <laughs> larger shadow right underneath these guys as well. All right, so then this is going to go right under there, and then we're just going to really lower down the opacity here, okay? I'm going to hit V and then the number 1, and that's a 10% shadow, so, okay? It's a very soft, very light shadow. And then we're just going to do one more layer, and I'm, we're going to do a really large shadow here. So really large this time, okay, but also really soft. You can see this is just going to be, the whole area is going to be covered. So V and then the, the, the number one. All right, so we have a really large and really soft shadow there. All right, cool. And that looks really great, guys. I, I think we're pretty much there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our different shadows. We have our back shadow as well as our large and our other foot and you can see each one of these layers is really important as I turn them off and on we lose a lot of realism so again when you're creating these shadows really simple to do just grab your gradient tool create a new gradient and transform it into place all right there we go and maybe we'll just lower the opacity of this down a little bit it gives you a lot of control here too you can just you know if you need your shadows to be darker just increase your opacity if you need them to be lighter just lower your opacity. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and zoom out and make sure it works at this level as well. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity, that large one, even more. We're gonna make that just 5% visible. All right, and there we are. So let's go ahead and turn these both of these shadows off and then right back on again. And I think we're looking great, guys. Cool, couldn't be easier. And that's how we create perfect shadows in Photoshop. If you want to do this on your own, just follow these key steps. First, start off by placing your subject on a new background and analyze the light. Do you have a hard light or a soft light? Do you need dark shadows or light shadows? It's going to be based on your actual light source. Think about like this. If you have a cloudy day, you're going to have soft shadows. If you have a very sunny day, you're going to have hard shadows. Shadows are pretty complex and they need to be created with a lot of different layers. In this example, we're creating new layers and using our gradient tool, painting with a foreground to transparent gradient and using a radial gradient. Now you can click and drag anywhere on your image and then hit Control or Command T to transform that gradient. Simply move it into place, lower your opacity, and you're good to go. Simply repeat these steps over and over each time you have an area that touches the ground. It should be darker and a little bit harder right where it touches the ground, and as you move out, it should be lighter and softer. And to finish it up, make sure to go through each one of these layers. Turn them off and then back on, and then you can change your opacity if needed. And that's all there is to creating perfect shadows in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make shadows in Photoshop. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or comment about today's episode, simply leave it in a comment box right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Billy, Billy, Billy. All right. And to finish it up, bang, bang, biggie, bang, bang, a bing, bang. <laughs>